Can y'all hear it? Yeah, are you able to hit present though so it'll show us your desktop? Oh, I'm sorry. They hadn't done anything yet, they just talking. Uh, Go into the woman, okay? We're not gonna get into that. Some of y'all know the, the story, but anyway, he said, Cause and what? Cause and effect. What is cause and effect? That's causality, all right? And that's what 4.1 and 4.2 focuses around. Now, some of you may walk on water, some of you may have invented the word causality, okay? But some people com conflicted with correlation. And that's where you have to know the difference between the two. Somewhere in that montage of speaking French, he says, I drink too much wine, I have to pee. Okay? Now, while that probably offends some snowflake or buttercup, it's, a, it's, it's in a movie, I didn't make that up, okay? I drink too much wine, I have to pee. That is causality. All right? Cause and effect. During the whole Matrix movie, they ask these questions. Why are you here? Why do you think you're here? Why do you? The whole movie is basically what, why, huh? And causality, causality is that, all right? Causality is when something is caused by something else. The best example, I drink too much wine, I have to be. Now, some of y'all might not like wine. You can substitute beer. Some of y'all know what beer is, right? I'm sorry, beer. Okay, I drink too much beer. I have to pee. Okay, that is causality. Cause and effect. Another example of causality. Drive a... 
VA vehicle. I never, I, I don't like words with LE on the end of them because I, for, I forget whether it's AL or EL or LE or whatever. I don't think that's right. It don't look right. Is it right, vehicle? Yes. It don't look right. Somebody look it up. It might be AL. Oh, anyway. No. Huh? It's still a vehicle. It's, that's right. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, spell it right. Yeah. All right. You buy a lot of what? Gas. Both of these. I drink too much wine. I have to pee. Drive a BA vehicle. You buy a lot of gas. Causality. Write these two examples down. One causes the other. Notice I said cause. Notice causality. One causes the other. Two examples of causality. Ma'am. Thank you. It's all right. You're just gonna fail. All right. Drive a VA vehicle. You buy a lot of gas. Actually, you're gonna see a test question about that second one. The second one, you'll see a chart, and it's going to ask about correlation and causality. Well, what is correlation? I like to say correlation is a stats glorified Slope. Now, of course, I'm not a academic G-O-D, lowercase G-O-D. I'm not one of these people that try to talk over your head. It is a, a lot of times, remember me talking about histogram and bar charts? And, told, and I told you that sometimes I believe statisticians make up stuff just so they can sound like they're you know, upty snufty with a mathematician. Okay, here's another example. Correlation. I believe back a long time ago when a bunch of statisticians decided to say, okay, we don't want to do mathematics because we can't do it, so we're going to do stats, statistics. All right, so they got over hundreds of thousands of years ago, they got over here and they said, well, slope is, is a fine word, but we need to make up another word because we need to sound like we know what we're doing. So we're going to call it correlation. And instead of the slope being a any number, the slope can be any number. We're going to make the correlation go between negative 1 and what? Positive 1. Negative 1 being a negative slope, positive 1 being a positive slope, and anything in the middle being a shallower version. Okay? A correlation, basically 1 is a 45 degree angle which means one-to-one -one ratio, choral ratio. And technically this is 215 degrees, but we're going to call it a negative 45 angle. Both of them are one-to-one -one because one over one, the slope of one over one is what? One. So that's why we say a 45 degree angle. A positive correlation means, yeah, there's a correlation there, meaning that there is a slope, that there is a pattern, okay? A pattern. Keyword, pattern. Pattern or tendency. Pattern or tendency. I went to a, I went to a workshop a while back, and go to these workshops and just think how how interesting a workshop is with a bunch of math teachers around, okay? It's boring as watching dirt, okay? It's very boring. I have a hard time going to these things, okay? So anyway, I went to one, and it was a, after, we we're talking about correlation and causality, and the guy came up with a great analogy, okay? Any of y'all ever worked at a theater before? Yes. Okay. 
Well, you know how movie ticket sales are. Well, here's his rendition of correlation. I work at the M Star Theater. I mean, you work at the M Star Theater, and I decide, well, I'm gonna go find out the latest Nicolas Cage movie, which was I don't know what it was, but it was Knowing or one of those weird movies that he does. Okay, Nicolas Cage movies, and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And these are ticket sales and dollars. And as the week went on, and this is Sunday, and of course, when do people go to the movies? On the weekend, right? Except people like me, I go on Monday. You know why? There ain't nobody there. <laughs> you can sit where you want to. Anyway, I'll shut up. So there is my graph. Everybody with me? And then I go to the hospital, and I want to find out the number of suicides that week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. And this is number of suicides. So, with over here, this is Nicolas Cage movie, or you can put in whoever you think is a terrible actor, um, Cage movie. And here, the number of suicides that week. So now me being a stat statistician, I can say, you know, if you go watch a Nicolas Cage movie, you're going to die. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what was that? Did y'all hear that? Was that, a, was that somebody laughing? You got me. Oh my gosh. You know what's going to happen. As soon as you walk out that door, those two ladies are going to beat the crap out of you. You're not supposed to interact with me. Okay. So, basically, I have a correlation here. Does everybody see that correlation? It's a 45 degree angle. I have correlation here. I have correlation here. Do I have causality? No. Correlation does not equal causality. Write this in big words. Correlation does not equal causality. Because cause, correlation is basically a 25 cent word for the tendency or the slope. That's a calculation. The correlation is basically a calculation, a pattern. Yes, you can have a pattern, but does that necessarily mean that one causes the other? No. But can't, like sometimes, like I guess in certain examples, can. Yeah, well, and that's where you and that's where you come up with the reasoning. Okay, <coughs> like for instance. Um, well, I gave you the, but um, if, okay, if, if you gave, if you went to a movie theater and you went into the movie and the movie had a 15 minute cartoon with SpongeBob SquarePants, mm -hmm. right at the beginning. Now, what does SpongeBob eat? Krabby Patties. So, he makes Krabby Patties, and have you ever seen how Spongebob made a Krabby Patty? Whenever you're watching Spongebob, you want to go out and get a hamburger. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's causality. But anyway, he also eats chips and popcorn. He eats popcorn. Okay? So, you show that movie, you show that episode of him eating popcorn, whatever movie it is. I think it's movie where he, uh, or episode where he watches uh, uh, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, and he's got a popcorn machine in there, and he's eating popcorn or whatever. And after that 15 minute episode, everybody runs outside to get popcorn. That's cause and effect. Correlation, cause and effect. The correlation is the, the pattern between 15 minute shows or, or, or one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute, and people going out to get popcorn, number of popcorn sales going up, that correlation is causality. 
Correlation does not always equal causality, but causality equals correlation. If you have causality, it will give you correlation. So you need to write that down at the bottom. But causality equals correlation. What do you mean? Well, let me ask you a question. Is that just one instance? The guy says, I drink too much wine, I have to pee? Is it going to just be that one occasion, or is it going to happen every single time? Every single time. Every single time. Okay? I can drink three or four glasses of tea, and I'm fine. But I drink three or four glasses of water. <coughs> so you figure that out. It has something to do with the sugar and everything that's in the tea, I guess. I don't know. But the whole case is... Sometimes it doesn't happen when you drink something else, okay? But when you drink wine, it's going to happen. When you do, just think of something that you drink or eat, and it causes problems or it causes you to go to the restroom more, or whatever the case may be. It's going to happen every single time. How much of you? How many of you are allergic to something? Say you're allergic to codeine. Well, if somebody gives you cough syrup with codeine, what's going to happen? You're going to have an allergic reaction. It's not going to say one day, okay, you're not allergic anymore. Unless something has intervened, the coating that you took when you were three years old that made you bust out into whatever is going to do the same thing when you're 28 years old. Okay? So correlation does not mean causality, but causality always means correlation. Say again. Sitting at a meeting or something, get a break in your practice. Yeah. Yeah. Even if they don't need to. There's only two or three things that really disgust me. One is beef liver, the other is meatloaf, and the other is cigarettes. Those three things really. Oh. Now I'm not talking about the people that you know. There's people that go out and when they drink a beer, they'll smoke a cigarette. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the people that like eat five or six, you know, cigarettes a day. You know, you know, eat them. You know, you know what I'm talking about. They have to go out whenever they have it. No matter if they want one or not, they got to go out and smoke three cigarettes. Oh, I can't handle that. But anyway, that's correlation. Now let's get to. There's three things that you need to know in this section of 4.1 and 4.2. Two or three things. One. You need to know the definition of causality. We just went over that. Causality is the reasoning. Reasoning. Reasoning is not calculation, is it? Reasoning. Reasoning of cause and effect. Two, you've got to know correlation. Correlation is the mathematical model of a pattern. I'm just going to say math calc slash model of a pattern. And you can also, right under that, we'll go with slope. Slope is the mathematical model with all numbers, okay? Mathematical calculation model, pattern, all numbers, okay? The correlation only goes from negative 1 to what? Positive 1, which means a 45 degree angle. Four, line of regression. Line of regression means a, num a line that's best fit. We will do this in the calculator and we will do it in Excel. I'm not going to have you do it by hand because it will take half the class to do one problem. Okay? So we're not doing that. So just ignore any homework questions I'll try to go through the homework, and unless y'all have done it, I'll go through the homework and maybe delete some. 
I don't know. I don't, I'll have to look and see because they always put some in there, and I don't like those, okay? So those are the four biggest things that we need to talk about, and we've already talked about two of them, and now we're going to talk about we're going to do a review over slope and what slope means, and then we're going to talk about the line of regression, and we're going to do that in technology, and that's 4.1 and 4.2, basically. So, slope. What is the slope? Slope is equal to M. M is the letter we use to represent the slope. Slope is equal to delta Y over delta X. So, I mean, you chemistry people, what does delta mean? Change. Change. Write that down. And then anytime you see the word delta, that means change. Change in Y over change of X. Okay? The formula for that is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. There's the formula. I'm also going to give you one other formula, and that's the point-slope equation. These are formulas that come from your algebra class and basically give you a little bit of insight to what we're talking about correlation. So for the part of slope, you need to make sure you know how to use these two formulas. And most of you have seen these formulas before. If you've had pre-algebra in your lifetime, you have seen these formulas before. So, how do you use them? Well, basically, there's three types of formulas, I mean, three types of questions that you can use with these formulas. One, there's a graph, and they're going to give you a line, and that line is going to have two points that you've got to use, like that one and that one. They're going to be given to you. Okay? The second type question and this can be also used with marketing. It can be used with business. It can be used with the questions that y'all have for homework. Just because this is not 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it can be 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000. It can be 20, 30, 45, 50, 50 million uh, widgets made. Okay? Any line that goes through coordinates, you can use this with. Whether it's business, marketing, biology, chemistry, uh, calculus, I don't care what. If you've got two points, you can do this. Okay? The second type problem will be a graph. And that can be an algebraic graph, or it can be a marketing graph, or it can be a chemistry graph. And they give you two lines on a piece of graph paper. And for some reason, my... Okay. How long did it take you to get it working? Oh, uh, this, the two styluses that I had was no good. Both of them were dead. This, this has been working fine. I don't know if nothing's working. It's like it's froze up. Y'all still with us, Oconee? Yes. Okay, it's not the internet. Maybe it froze up. Let me see what it does now. Never had to do this before. Never had it just. One on one way to skin a cat. Now, when you have one like this and you do not have two points, usually they'll put this on a background of graph paper so you can what? Find two points. Okay? So you might want to put. <coughs> Note, just put note, graph paper with two points. Battery's fine. That battery's dead. 
That battery is dead. Must be the batteries that ran the other one. Okay. See that light? Battery's fine. And then the third. Now this makes no sense. It's like the pin's been turned off. Now the, now the mouse is going crazy. We all know it's the Russians. Three. Given two points or a slope and two, I mean a slope and a point. And we'll do an example. Here's one example. 2, comma, 3, parentheses, 4, 4, comma, 7. All right, that's two points. In other words, they give you two points, or they're going to give you a point, 2, comma, 3, and a slope. M is equal to 4. Okay, so that's the three types of problems you're going to see with these two type of um, equations or formulas. All right, so I want you to find the slope of these two points, and then I want you to plug and chug these two points are this point and this slope into the point slope equation. Again, this should be a sort of review. And while you are doing that, I'm going to try to figure out why this machine is not, this pin is not working. Just quit like something turns something off. I don't know. I have no earthly idea. Okay, so this one is x sub 1, y sub 1. This one is x sub 2, y sub 2. So all you do is plug and chug into the slope formula. So I'm going to erase all this stuff. And I always draw my formula. In other words, if my son was to walk in to my office during the day or come to me at night and say, Daddy, find the slope of this line, I would do this. M is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. I put parentheses. I got three degrees. And I put parentheses. Of course, some of y'all don't because y'all walk on what? Exactly. You throw a negative in there, you throw a fraction or a decimal in there, and it'll blow some of you walking on water. You'll sink like a rock. Okay? Those of you that really suck at, you know, algebra and stuff, put the parentheses. Because the people that walk on water ain't going to listen to me anyway. So, here we go. Seven and three and four. And what? And what's 7 minus 3? And what's 4 minus 2? Two? 2. And 2 over 1. Now the reason I write it 2 over 1, and you can write it as 2, but when it's in a slope form, that's vertical over what? Horizontal. Vertical over horizontal. So you always need to remember that in case you're drawing a line. So my slope is equal to 2. So that's finding the slope. 
that will be asked of you in 2.1 or 4.1 and 4.2, somewhere in there, they might ask you to find the slope. Why? Because it's a review and it'll send you into the correlation. Okay? And the correlation is based on the same mathematics that you use for the slope. Okay? Right? So I'm going to erase this and we're going to do this kind of form. We're going to do this kind. Now, the first two, the first two, the graph with the blue dots on it and the graph with no dots on it, you have to what? You have to use those two blue dots or you have to find two points. Will you get the same slope? Yes. Okay, if you do the math correctly, you'll get the same slope whether you pick two points or you pick the two points that they do, or they pick you two points. doesn't matter. You're going to use the same math right here. Okay, so let me erase that. And now, the question, I'm going to write in red letters here because you're going to see this in the directions. Find an equation. When you see those letters, those, no, those directions, or you see those three words in the directions, find an equation, that means you're going to use the point slope equation. So, we take two and three, and m is equal to four. Y minus y sub one is equal to m times x minus x sub one. Oops. And this is x sub one, this is y sub one. Plug and what? <coughs> Plug and chug. And simplify. Y minus 3 is equal to 4x times what? 4x minus 8. And then bring this 3 over. Becomes a positive 3. And that gives you y is equal to 4x minus what? 5. And that is the equation that goes through this point and has a slope of 4. Now, when I show you those two problems, everybody should be saying, oh yeah, I remember that back in pre-algebra. Or Algebra 1. Or Math 101. Or Math 32. Whichever you took, you should remember that. Okay, now we've covered three out of the four things. So that leaves the last thing, which is regression line of best fit. I'll let y'all finish writing, and then we'll move on to that. Now, 4.1 and 4.2, you shouldn't be too serious with it because you're only talking about 20% of the Unit 2 test. 80% of your Unit 2 test is going to come from Chapter 4, I believe, right? Or 5, they changed in the previous book, we used it to chapter 4. Now it's chapter 5 because it's probability, I think. I have to look. Okay, everybody good with this? Everybody got it written down? Okay, now I'm going to go to... I better go ahead and tell you what regression is. This is called a scatter plot. A scatter plot is when you take data and you what? You plot it. And it usually looks something like this. Doesn't make a straight line, does it? So a regression line basically is the line of best fit. You take those points, you crunch them through a lot of math, and you get a line. Now, I'm not going to make you crunch through the math because you're not in a third, fourth semester statistics course going into research. Okay, so you don't need to do that. That line is going to look something like that. That is called the regression line. And from the regression line, you're supposed to be able to tell us whether it is a correlation or not. And yes, that is a positive correlation because it's about a 45 degree angle. How do you know if it's a positive correlation? Which way do we read? 
So put your car on the left side. What's that car got to do? Got to go uphill. Uphill means what? Positive. Downhill means negative. That's easy. Okay? So the regression line, once you get the regression line, the regression line is going to give you a correlation. A correlation coefficient. And that correlation coefficient is going to give you a number between negative 1 and what? Positive 1. So, we know what a scatter plot is now. It's just plotting a bunch of... We know what a regression... We know what regression is now because we're putting a line that we can do a formula on in there. And then we're going to find the slope of that line or the correlation coefficient, which will be a number between negative 1 and 1. And then you will say there is a positive correlation. Then you'll look back at the two things and you'll say, is this causality? And you will say either yes or no. Because correlation does not mean causality, but causality means correlation. So, let's do one. Let's go to the handy-dandy Excel spreadsheet. And I will only ask that you do these on the Excel spreadsheet or your computer or your calculator. And I'll show you how to do it if I can remember. All right, so we're going to put in... Just a bunch of numbers, okay? Um, they're probably going to give you an X and a Y, so we'll do X and Y. Let me move all this junk out of here. Let's go with 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. And then let's go... 5, 8, 2, 6, 8, 1, 4, 3, 7, 2, 6, 4, and 7. They don't matter. This is just arbitrary numbers. Okay, of course, this is your X, and this is your Y. Now, they'll either give you a set of numbers like this, or they will I can't stand it being top center. Okay, there we go. Or they'll give you, you know. Okay. So the first thing you do is highlight. All right there. So you highlight, you know, you highlight. Everybody with me? And then you go to insert. So you might want to write this down, especially if you got a laptop and you can do it, you know, when you're you know, doing your test or homework. Insert, and you want to do it right there. There's, everybody see the scatter plot right there? You click on it. And then you click on scatter plot. Now, if you want to use lines, that's fine. I don't like to use lines when you're talking about, the best thing to use is scatter plot when you're talking about regression. There it is. There's the plot. Now, I can tell you right now, pull up my handy-dandy whiteboard. I'm going to put that line, dang old, straight line maker, dang old. I'm going to draw it right about there. How can I do that? Because I've been doing math a while, okay? I know it's probably not very, it's not, there's not a correlation here. Why? Or it's very little. Because if, if you look at the dots, the pattern is kind of horizontal. A horizontal line means that your correlation is zero. Because what's the slope of a horizontal line? Yeah. Zero. Okay? So I'm thinking it's around zero. Now there's no way I could get it exact. No way. Unless I go through and find the distance between this and this point, this and this point, or this point and that line, 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 and do a mathematical square root summation of all those points. I'm not going to make you do that. So what do you got to do? Well, if you're using Excel, you click on one of the points 
a right click. Well, hold on, my mouse. There we go. Click on one of the points. Click on one time. You see those X's? And then right click on either one of them. Right click and go to add trend line. Everybody see that? And there is the trend line. You see their trend line is blue. Mine, my, I kind of gave mine a little bit of a positive. They've got a negative. Okay, so I'm gonna take mine off. There's the trend line. Now, well, I messed up. Hold on a sec. Add trend line. There we go. Now, go down here on the right-hand side and go down to display equation and display R factor. I'm going to move those over a little bit and I'm going to try to click on them. So you didn't have to highlight them and then tell them to do that? Say again? You didn't have to highlight the A and the B column? I had to highlight the A and B column, the, the two and the five are down to do the graph, yes. Yeah, that part I got. Yeah. To do that R, R, R equals Yeah, you don't have to do you don't have to do any of that. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right? You know yeah, on some of the uh, hold on a second. I've got to I'm a guy, remember I got to do one thing at a time. Where is my font? I wanna make it bigger. Oh my lord, that'll take forever. There we go. Okay. Yes, on some of the homework, it's going to ask you for an R factor. And some of the homework, it asks you for something I don't even know what it is. So we're not going to do those. That's the ones I'm telling you to avoid doing in the homework. But we can, we'll look at that later. Um, I know you sent some questions, and chances are that's probably the questions you sent. Mm -hmm. um, here, what kind of slope do we have? Y is equal to MX plus B. What kind of slope do we have? Negative. Negative point zero one two two. So we got a negative correlation. The relationship between the slope and the correlation as far as the sign is spot on. If you've got a negative slope, you've got a negative correlation. If you've got a positive slope, you've got a positive correlation. And if you got zero slope, you got a zero correlation. That is a test question, so make sure you remember that. What else does it tell us? It tells us since it's a negative correlation and it's very shallow, heck, it's almost horizontal, <coughs> that we have almost no correlation on this. So I would say very little correlation. How do you find the correlation coefficient, which is R? You take the square root of R squared. So somebody take your calculator and take 0 .0015 and take the square root of that for me. It's going to be very small. Somebody tell me what you get. Point zero zero point zero one. So you've got a correlation coefficient of point zero one. What's it between? Negative one and what? One. You've got point zero one. That's right beside what? <coughs> zero. So you've got almost no correlation. There's no correlation. And if there's no correlation, then you know dang well there's no what? Causality. Okay? That's one thing that's appropriate about correlation. If there's no correlation, then there's very little, very little chance of causality. So that's that. So let's turn to one of your questions so we can kill two birds with one stone and I can tell you what to what to watch out for because I'll, we'll do it in a we'll do it uh, let me show you how to do it in here also. So take your handy dandy calculator and let's type in stat, edit, and just type in 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. I'm just going to, I'm not going to do the same numbers. I'm just going to do some numbers. 
five, six, eight, seven, two, three, five, four, and nine, one. Okay, that's too many. Okay, so you got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. And then on the Y, you want to put this in your notes. Five, six, eight, seven, two, three, five, four. And then you go to stat, calculate, and go to linear regression. Got it? And hit enter. And just go down and hit calculate because it's going to automatically read those first two columns. And there it is. What is your slope? 0.19. So here we've got a 0.2 slope. Now, I'm trying to remember how to do the correlation coefficient. It's supposed to have that on there. <laughs> Hold on a second. I'm going to have to go to. You got to turn it on in your. Give me a second. I've got to find. Where do you turn on? I can't see that blue on there. Can y'all see it? It's uh, catalog. What is catalog? Is it second zero? Yeah. Yeah. And it's not display. Hold on, I have to look it up. I forget it. Y'all ever have words that you forget? Yeah, well, I forgot. Turn on our coefficient T, T, I, 84. I have to do this every semester because I forget the word. Diagnostic. There it is. Diagnostic. Go to Diagnostic on your TI-84 under Catalog. Just go down. Let me hit the... Go. go down to Diagnostic, and it should say all... Or it should... Uh, you hit on it one time, and it should toggle. Let me see what it does. Yeah. Diagnostic on. Hit Enter. And hit Enter. There. And now go to Stat. Calculate linear regression and hit calculate and there you go. And this R is a little bit different. It's 0.46. So there's a little bit more of a correlation here, but not what? Not much, because you ain't even halfway there. So you you got a you got some correlation in a what? Negative fashion or a positive fashion? Negative, because it's a negative slope. Okay, so that's how you turn, that's how you do your calculator. All right, so let's go to a problem. Let me go to email. Let's pull up some of the problems. Let's see. Miss Rollins, you sent some. Let me go with subject. Let me get them in order. There we go. So I have no idea what kind of order they're in. I'm assuming some of them sent twice. Oh, that's bad. Huh? What is this thing? That's number parts. three. All right, so this is number three on your homework, 4.1. Okay, so here's a problem right here. I don't know what they're asking for, but we're going to look at we're going to look at it. I'm going to blow it up a little bit. All right, we've got explanatory. Let's read it. Determine whether the scattered indicates a linear relation may exist between two variables if the relation is linear. Blah, 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 blah. This is more of a curve. You could say it's linear. I could take my handy dandy line maker and I could put a line, but it would be something like this, but it doesn't really fit. Why? Because it looks like a little bit of a curve. See the way that's curving there? So I would say it has a nonlinear, but I don't know if they want. Okay, it does not have a linear because I do not have a straight line. Okay, I'd say B. 
Okay, so that's a good test question. We don't want you to figure, but I'll show you how to do that when we get to a problem. I'll show you how to do it. No, it's, um, I'm sorry, what? It's the same one. I think it's C. Well, yeah, it's going to be different on yours. Yeah, it's going to be different. Look there, we got it right. Yeah, it'll be different because they changed the order. So that's that one. That's a good test question, and that's just looking at a graph. So, you know, that's nonlinear because it does have a crook in it. I'll show you how to do a nonlinear. Well, I'll show you right quick. On the, uh, on the, let's go with a nonlinear like, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And then 169, 144, 121, uh, 100. I'm doing the square. I'm doing a parabola for those of you that invented it. 64, 49, 36, 25, 16, uh, 9, 4, and what? One. Okay, y'all see the, the nonlinear now? So I'm going to go click on it, right click, and instead of linear, I'm going to pick nonlinear or polynomial. Watch what happens. It should fit it exactly because that is a polynomial. Watch. <sighs> Look there. Of course, this one needs to be deleted. Okay, delete. There we go. See how that fits? And then if I do a trend line, it'll say y is equal to x squared. Uh, trend line down here. Is there a correlation? Yeah. Now look at the correlation coefficient. What is it? One, because they all what? Fit. Fit like a glove, see? And that's x squared plus 0. I don't know if y'all know, but 2 to the negative 13 power is 0. Okay, so that's a nonlinear. So you can do it on the, and you can do it on the, uh, on the computer, on the calculator, except don't hit uh, linear regression, you hit polynomial. And it'll throw that in there. So that's how you do that. Y'all learning all kinds of stuff in here. Don't y'all feel good about yourself? Okay, let's do something else. Let's do let's erase these because I want to have all these in here. And this one is number ten. So that first one is a good test question. Oh, look at there. We got points. First thing you're gonna do is send it to the Excel spreadsheet. Now I'm gonna show you what I want you to know. Now what they ask you, I have no idea what they're gonna ask you, but I'm gonna show you what I want you to know. Uh, so we're gonna go here. Open in what? Excel. Pull that up. There they are. Now, you would type these in your calculator. So if you don't have a laptop and you've got a calculator, go ahead and type them in. I'm going to make them bigger for you so you don't complain. Of course, most complaints come from the back of the room. I don't know why people sit at the back of the room and they complain about not being able to see. Yeah, just leave. I'd leave too. See ya. Yeah. All right. So there's your numbers. Type them in. And I'm just going to highlight. And I'm going to hit insert. And I'm going to hit points. There they are. Now somebody tell me what kind of a I see a positive correlation. That's what I see. But let's go back and look at the directions because they usually tell you what they want.
A pediatrician wants to determine the relationship between child's height and head discomfort. She blah, 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 measure the height and head. Blah, blah, blah. Does anybody say linear or determine the variable in the exponential, which is choose the correct answer below? Uh, the X, okay, they want to know, okay, this is your X. Your height is your X, and your Y is your circumference. So what are they asking for? The explanatory, explanatory variable, that would be head circumference. So I would say, I would say that's the answer. Because that's what they're comparing, are they not? Okay, it's the other way around. Okay, I don't care about that. The, explanat the explanatory variable is height, and the response, okay, I'm sorry, think about it. Your head is not your head is not supposed to grow. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm thinking about Stewie on Family Guy. Okay, your head is not supposed to grow unless you, your height what grows. Think of this not exponential. Think of it as dependent and independent. What is dependent with the head and the height? The height is dependent. I mean the independent. So that means the height <laughs> is going to be the the primary. Because you, your head don't grow unless your height grows. You see what I'm saying? It don't go the other way around. So if they just put, if they'd have put dependent and independent, I would have done a whole lot better. But the dependent is the head circumference. The independent is the height. So I guess they made up another word for the explanatory is the height. So the explanatory should be your independent. Just remember, write that down. Explanatory is your independent. Independent means I'm going to do this no matter what. Which one is going to do it no matter what? The height or the head circumference? The height. Your head circumference is not going to grow and then your height follow. Unless you're Stewie on Family Guy. Nobody likes Family Guy, huh? Nobody's going to talk to me. Okay. So they didn't say whether they wanted a linear or nonlinear. Oh, draw the diagram. Okay, I think we're looking at a hook. Looks like this one or this one. So let's look for something distinctive in our graph. Something distinctive. Okay, here's something. Two level and then two going what? Negative slope left to right. So let's look for that. The two on the bottom are level, and then we got left to right negative slope right there. So let's look for that. Blow it up a little bit. Okay, there's there's I like that. There, there it is. There it is. So we got two left to right. I mean, left to right and down. So I believe it's going to be that. One. I'm getting mixed up. Going between. Okay. So which one? There's two. There's two. Okay. There's two left to right. So it must be. I'm looking for something different. These two look just alike. Unless oh, they they've labeled the graph different. This is your this is your head circumference, and this is your height. Which one is independent? The height should be on the bottom, and the circumference should be your Y. So I think it's B. I feel good about myself. Remember, independent is always your X. Independent is always your X. In this case, explanatory. Explanatory. I'm a statistician. Explanatory is always going to be your X. Your independent. All right, look, they want the R. So let's go back to our handy dandy calculator or our Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to click. I'm going to right click. Add trend line. I'm assuming they want a linear. And I'm going to add. And I'm going to blow it up when I get it over here. Blow it up to 
Okay, it didn't do it. There we go. So somebody take the take the uh, they got to do three three places now. Take the square root of r squared. What is the square root of 0 0.5702? 0.755. You're not going to set me up, are you? It's not 7549 or 7543. I'm going to make sure. Is everybody getting 0.755? Because some people set me up to get wrong answers. They ain't going to talk to me, so I forget about it. They ain't going to get a laugh out of me. He's going to get beat up. All right. We got that right. We feel good about ourselves. So let's look at the graph again. Is there a correlation? Yes. There's a pretty strong correlation. It's not one, no, seven, one point seven five, seven six, but it's there. So I would say there's a correlation here. Now, is there a causality? Yes. If your height increases, unless you're special or unique. Those are the words you use, right? Special or unique. Unless you're special or unique, your head growth, or your head is going to grow in proportion to your body. Okay? So there is causality here. If you stop growing, hopefully, for some people, they don't, their head stops, just keeps growing. But that, that's figuratively and, and, and physically. But anyway, okay, forget it. Like, Hit on a bull, winged on a pickle. Nobody's going to laugh in here. So there is correlation. So somebody tell me which one it is because I ain't going to read all that. It's, I think it's B or D because I see negative here and there's no negative correlation. So it should be. Yes, there's B. R is positive and is less than the critical value. Critical value? Yes, there is move, 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 yeah, greater. Value. Where's the critical value? Yeah, click on it. I got a book. Can I see that little, little box? Up here? You can see the, yeah, the little on little that answer. Oh, they give it to you. Okay, I didn't know they gave it to you. Okay, for how many? How many were there? 7.54. 7.754. 7. 7. 7. We had point what? Seven. So it's more. Because we got, we got, hold on a second. How many are in here? I just, I just need to, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight. So it should be eight. Point seven oh seven. So it's more. So it would be more. I didn't see the, I didn't see it in the table. So it should be more. Which one says more? Greater? Yeah. 0.707. Got to count the numbers. I, I thought it was seven. I'm sorry. So when I ask for n, you just count one column. When I ask for n, n is how many you have. Yeah, you how many? How many measurements do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight. Okay, this is just busy work. What did the conversion have on the linear correlation coefficient? What? Convert the data. Really? Okay, so you got to convert every one of these correlation, I mean, or every one of these head circumferences, multiply each one by 2.54, right? Let's see, one inch is equal to this is circumference inches. Okay, inches, so that would be one inch over one. And then inches on the bottom. Yeah, multiply each one of these, 7.2. So this is, this is ridiculous. All right, so multiply 2.54 times 27.5. Are they just going to do? I mean, they're going to do. They only have. 
Wait a minute. Does this go down? Does it have got to have eight? Says the first four. Oh, the first four. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm not reading the directions. Okay, so 27.5 times 2.54. What do you get? 69.85. I'm sorry, what? 69.85. Okay, and do the 17.2 times 2.54. The correlation is going to change a little bit because you've got different numbers. Um, 25.75 times 2.54. And 16.9 times 2.54. And 26 times 2.54. 66.54. And 17.2 times 2.54. And the last one, 26.5 times 2.54. And 16.9 times 2.54. Oh, my Lord. I'm not doing that. Y'all get the point. Okay, then you, they're going to ask you to do it and see if it matches up or see what kind of correlation coefficient. Is it going to be equal? Since you're multiplying everything by the same thing, it should be the same. The correlation coefficient is not going to change. It might change just a little bit because of the decimals they're using because they're multiplying by two decimals here. It might change a little bit, but the correlation is not going to change. Are you changing the heads? Are you changing the heights? No. You're just multiplying it by 5. It's not going to change the correlation coefficient. It's going to be the same. It should be the same. Did anybody do this problem? I did that problem. Okay, well, keep going, and you're going to type them in. Let's go ahead and type the rest of them in. I'm not going to. I'm going to let you all give it a second to type them in. I'm not going to go through each one. Go through and type them in. We're starting at 27.25. I'm going to give y'all a minute or two to type them all in, and then we'll, uh, I'll tell you what, let's just do this. I'm going to do it on a spreadsheet, that way it'll be a whole lot easier. Do busy work on a spreadsheet, make it easier. What is it, 2.54 equals this number times... Two, no coughing in class. 2.54. You can only breathe in here. I'm joking. And of course, they probably had decimals. There we go. And then equals this times 2.54. I understand what they're doing here. They're trying to get you all to realize that if you multiply by a constant, is it going to change anything? It's going to change the numbers, but it's not going to change the relationship. The relationship is still going to stay the same. Everybody with me? Now, plot this. Insert. The neatest thing. Yeah, ain't that neat? <laughs> Can you imagine there's teachers that's teaching this and they're teaching it to do it by hand? Oh, add trend good. line and add what? Display Can and R. Hold on a second. Hold on one second. What is R squared? Is it the same? 
Why? Let me give you, I guess it's kind of a crude example, but I'm going to give you an example. Let's say, I'm going to pick on Mr. Owens. Mr. Owens, how tall are you? He's 5'10". How much you weigh? 135. I'm going to multiply that by 2. I'm going to say that you're going to gain 100 pounds in the next, or 100 whatever. Is it going to change your height? No. Okay, what was your question? How do you get that format trim line thing? You go down at the bottom. When you click on this, when you click on the X, click on it and right click, add trend line. You right click on the X. Right click on the X. Add trend line and go down to the bottom. And so make sure you do R squared also. Now your calculator will give you R, but the computer will just give you R squared and you take the square root of it. Question on that one. Now, is that a good test question? No. I would never ask you that test question because it's got too many parts and too much busy work. Now, the first couple of questions, that's a good question. So mark that part as a good question. Graphing it. Um, R, anytime you get R, that's a good test question. And I don't mind this one, but I don't care nothing about the critical value, but there is a positive linear correlation. We saw that in the Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to go with those three questions. Whether there's a correlation, can you tell me what the R is, and is there a positive or negative correlation? Is there causality? In causality, you don't calculate. You just think. Okay? So that's some of that's a good test question. Oh, somebody sent us a question. Another, oh, those are, those are, okay, those are. All right. Um, that's number 10. That's number 10. Okay, so those two can go. Let me see what time it is, because some of y'all are having, I don't think class is over until 20 after, is it? You got to go early? Okay, go ahead. I didn't, guess the I, I, I didn't know what time it was. I just saw you convulsing, and I just thought it was time to go. No. I have to watch it, because I get to talking, and I forget what time it is. All right, so see ya. Yeah. All right, so this one is 4.1 number 8. That was number 10, wasn't it? Uh -huh. Okay, so number 8. Let's see if this is a good test question. Oh, it's going to ask the same thing about the, this the company just said, draw a diagram of the data, compute the correlation coefficient, determine whether it's linear between X and Y. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and click on the data. There's the data. Move it over to the spreadsheet. I'm going to go ahead and do everything on the spreadsheet because I ain't going to go back and forth. So here we go. Let's go ahead and insert, and there we go. Click, right click, add trend line. It's linear, I'm assuming. Um, display equation. Not much of one, is there? Somebody take the square root of 0 0.0222 and write it down for me. Got it? Just write it down. It's going to be 0 .00 something, isn't it? 1.011. So there's not much of a correlation. It's got a little bit of steepness in it. got a little bit. So it's, it's better than zero, but not much. Let's go back to the question. This is where you go back. Well, well X is 7, 6, Five, I don't understand what they say. Determine whether there is a oh, linear relation. Yes. It looks like a linear relation. Um, because I don't see much of a curve. And in this type of book, in this introduction, the, the curve is going to be, you're going to see a curve. They're not going to try to trick you. Because this is like the first semester of probability. They're not going to try to trick you. And is that what they got for the correlation, 0.0? I thought you said 0 0.01. Yes. Okay, so that must be incorrect. It's not a zero. Yeah, it won't it's, let it's me. It's 0 0.0222. I'm trying to change it. It won't let me change it because of the homework problem, I guess. I don't know. Well, let me change that, but it won't let me change this. That's not the correlation coefficient. Okay, determine whether there is a linear... 
there is a positive, but it's very slight, uh, an absolute value of the correlation coefficient is point, what y'all say it was? Point zero one two. Well, it was um, two two two. That was squared, right? Yeah, you gotta have the square. Yeah. Square I root. From, I got it from. What's the square root? Uh, point zero one one one. Three one. Okay, now we gotta look at the. Or how many? How many do we have? How many x's did we have? What's the n? What? I'll count it. That's all right. I don't. I don't expect y'all to go through five. the laborious thing five. of one, two, five. three, four, five. Thanks, Oconee. Five. So pull up five point eight seven eight. So that's much less than point eight seven eight. That's much less than. So not greater than the critical value. What was it? Point eight seven eight. A positive linear function, I would say. Okay, and it's going to say. This one is uh, three decimal places. They don't want three decimal places? Uh, round two, three decimal Right here? I can't change that one. Not for that, that coefficient, yeah. I don't think it likes a positive. I think it wants. Because the correlation coefficient is. Oh, that's supposed to. Well, but did our correlation coefficient want it positive? That's positive. And the absolute yeah, you still value got, you of still got four. was why isn't it changing it? That should be zero. Good. It should be good now. Okay. They got point one four nine. Okay, we got to go back. How did they get point one four nine for R? Square root of that, right? Hold on. Point zero two two two. That's what I was telling you. Yeah. You okay, understand. take the square root. What's the square root of that? That's what I that's just multiply it times point five, right? No, raise it to the point five. Power. Oh, that's where I'm Thank you, Mr. Owens. Thank you for screwing it up. You set me up. You're going to fail. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Just like a woman. I need to listen to a woman. Don't listen to a woman. I tell you what. Okay, so we got it right. It's just that Mr. Owens don't know how to calculate anything. He's a loser. Okay, now let's figure out why we didn't get the other part right. Okay, we got that wrong. And I figured this was... Okay. Okay, so what they're saying is it was a slight. Remember when I said it was a slight correlation? Let's look at it. It wasn't enough to really matter because the the has to be greater than the 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 what do they call it? The critical value has to be greater than. So if it's greater than 0.878, then it would be a it would be a correlation, but they're not. So, my bad. That one is not a bad test question. I just don't like that last part because it confuses you. I like right up to B. I like that. All right, next one. Keep in mind on the time because I don't want anybody to explode. Uh, number eight, number seven. Let's try that one. It's probably similar. Compute the correlation, to blah, 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 blah. They don't, okay, they give us a critical value, so we'll do that. There's our points open in Excel. And enter. And insert data. Okay, whatever. Okay, right click. Trend line. Now, somebody take the square root of point 
we got a correlation a bit here because that's going to be 0 0.9. What is the square root of 0 0.8132? It's going to be around 0 0.9 something or 0 0.09. Huh? 0.901. Everybody get 0.901? I'm going to wait till no. somebody tells no. me. Okay, what'd you get? You said what? That R number, right? You got to take the square root of 0 0.8132. Zero point six six one. It's going to be the square root of 81 cent is 9. So there's going to be a 9 in there somewhere. Let me take the calculator and do it. Well, let's just punch it in. Why, well, let's say stat, edit, and we're going to type in 24682467. 24667. Delete. I can't find the delete button on this keyboard. Oh, and it's stupid. You gotta hit this to delete. You can't hit the keyboard. Is that it? And then here, four, eight, ten, four, eight, ten, fourteen, and twenty. Delete, delete. I'm sorry, y'all. I have to use certain. Certain numbers will work, certain things will work on my keyboard here, but it won't work on other things. So, they'll bear with 4, 8, 10, 14. Is that right? Now, let's go to stat, calculate linear regression, and calculate. Okay, there is our 0.902. Okay, 0.902. So let's check the, how many X values do we have? Two, four, six, seven, seven. Do we have five? So it's greater, so there is a, cor there is a correlation. Ours is 0 0.902, wasn't it? So it's greater. So which one does it look like? Let's go back to the drawing. We're looking for an incline, then straight up. So let's look for an incline, and then straight up. It's either C or D, not these two, so that's not it. Let's look at the, get it one more time. I believe it's the last one. What do y'all think? Okay, and the correlation coefficient is 0 0.902. <coughs> Because the correlation is positive and the absolute value of its correlation coefficient is 0.902 greater than the 0.878, a positive correlation exists. Now that should be correct once I know what they're wanting. Okay, so that's a good, that's a good test question because you know, I like A and B, and then y'all just got to do the methodical, you know, practice of typing in the things they want. All right, so that's that one. Next one, let me delete these two. I got time to go over a couple more. This is number six. If it's the same type, I'll probably go to another question, okay? All right, this is a good test question. Why is it a good test? Why is it a trick question? Oh, I'm sorry. First of all, what is that close to? One. Not one. Negative. negative one. So we're looking for very sharp negative incline. So it's not that one. It's not these two because that's about zero. It's not that one. So that's D. So that's a good test question. 
Not that it's easy because it's trying to get a point across. I'm trying to get. And remember, I'm not going to give y'all 10 or 15 questions on 4.1 and 4.2. I'm going to give you at most five. And it's going to cover correlation, causality, slope, and the correlation coefficient. What, you know, what we just figured R. So some of these off the wall questions. You, you can go ahead and get them done for the homework, but they won't be on the test. But that was a good question. So we'll delete that one. Next one. This is number five. Probably going to be the same type. Okay. All right. We got a 0.78. Well, let's find the extreme. Where is the extreme? 0.95. Which one would be 0.95? Probably that one. So I'm going to do 0 0.95. I'm going to say I of 1. So we've got a 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is going to be shallower than... Ooh. I would say this one. See that point right there? That point right there is going to pull that line up. So this one is going to be the 0 0.78. So that's going to be 3. And then, since this point is not as high up as this point, just back this way, it's going to let the line lay down a little bit more. So think of the points as pulling like reins on a horse. What happens if you pull back on the reins on a horse? It's going to pull his head back. That's going to pull that line back a little bit. If the line is steeper, it's going to be 0.8. Line forward. You lean forward, it's going to be lower. It's going to be lower. So I would say that that's probably. No, I might want to switch. I might want to switch this one. This one may be higher than this one. Yeah, I feel like the points on the edge are higher. This one may be your highest one. This may be 0 0.9. So, that, so that's going to be 3. I think that one's going to be 3. We're going to switch, let's see, 0 0.78, probably be this one, 2. And then C, I think I'm getting myself confused. Yeah, it would be 1, because it lays down further. This one would go back all the way. This one would be back like 45 degrees, and this one is lower than this one because of that point right there, I would assume. Nope, I bet I had it right the first time. Let's see what they got. Is that what I had the first time? Number one, or A, is number two. Yeah, that's what I said the first time. B is number one, and C is three. Yep. Okay, that's okay test question. I, I think that those can be tricky. We'll, we'll probably put one of those on the test. Next one. This one right here. This is number four. I feel like I'm doing y'all's homework for you. But we haven't went over this, so I don't mind questions since we haven't gone over it. All right, what's this going? What's this doing? It's got a negative what? <coughs> a negative correlation. It looks pretty strong because there's no outliers. You see what I'm saying? So that's about at a 45 degree angle, negative 45 degrees. So I would say there is a linear <coughs> correlation. So D, and do the two variables have a positive or negative association? Well, if this is negative, what's this going to be? Negative. It's a negative. It's going to be negative because it's going left to right what? Put your car, which way do we read? And where's the car go? Right here. What's the car going to do? It's going downhill, so it's negative. That's a good test question. This is number five. Probably the same type question. Uh, section three. Oh, this is section three, so we're done with that. Okay. All right, so I went over those questions. Y'all should be good to go. All right, who's got questions on anything so far?
Is the homework open for 4.1 and 4.2? Yeah. Okay. Get to work on 4.1 and 4.2. Send those questions in and we'll go over them. Y'all have a good day.